Good morning, everybody, and welcome to day two of Seesaw Connect. We are beyond excited that you're back here with us again today, or if it's your first day, we're welcoming you here to Seesaw Connect. Hi, everyone. I'm Chris from the Seesaw team, and welcome to Creating Rockstar Writers with Ben Cogswell and Jen Dean. During our session, we encourage you to take notes, share insights, and be active while learning. Remember, you can get points on the leaderboard for being active during our sessions. In the top right, you're going to see our chat where you can share all of your insights and connect with other people. Right next to it, you'll see our Q&A. There you can ask questions of our presenters or of us here at Seaside anytime. Feel free to ask those questions. We'll answer them if time allows. There's also a tab labeled handouts where you can find any session resources that are going to be shared. If you'd like to turn on closed captions, select the CC in the top right corner, choose your preferred language. Stick around until the very end for your PD certificate and some awesome giveaways. Now I'll hand it over to Ben and Jen. All right, you ready? I'm ready. Good morning. I was looking in the chat and seeing where everyone's from. We have international represented here, a lot of Midwest. This is so exciting. I actually started my teaching career in the Midwest. So welcome, everyone. And the, and the chat is moving fast. I, I put the slides in. They are. You can access them in the handouts. I'll drop them a, a few more times as well, just because that way, if you'd like those Google slides, um, you're more than welcome to have them. But I guess that we should get started. Welcome. We're we're excited to be here at Seesaw Connect, and we're 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 uh, creating some rock star writers. And of course, uh, we have the amazing, wonderful, talented um, Jennifer Dean, who is a first grade teacher at Amelia Earhart Elementary School of International Studies, former second grade teacher of Illinois. She's done pre K. She has her master's. She's she's like super certified. And her favorite candy. We were just discussing this. Almond Joy, her favorite uh, coffee drink from Starbucks, oh, Americano. Know? That's Jen. <laughs> and welcome to, of course, our amazing Ben. Ben has done so many different things from being an a TOSA instructional coach to a sixth grade teacher to a kindergarten teacher. And this year he made a crazy change and went to fourth grade new school. He just He's already back to school and he's here doing Seesaw Connect. We were discussing candy and... Uh, he said he really likes peanut M&Ms and um, his Starbucks. He loves dirty chives. If you have not had one of those, by the way, they are delicious. Recently tried one. It's like it's like basically espresso with chai. Or it's chai with espresso, right? Yeah. So it's, it's amazing. And as you can see, he's also super, super certified. Um, so let's get started. Let's have some fun today. Jen? Oh, yes. Okay. So this is where the chat's going to go real crazy. But if you could think of... Your summer, and maybe you're still enjoying summer, but what emoji represents your summer or your summer vacation? I'm going to throw mine in here right now, too, but throw your emojis. What emoji represents your summer vacation? So, Jen, it looks like you got the book and the beach because I know you did some reading and you were able to um, go on the beaches uh, and enjoy that, whether it's a beach by maybe like an ocean or a beach by a great lake. Yeah, so... Uh um, I'm looking at the chat. First of all, hey, Rockford, Illinois. That's where I started as a paraprofessional, by the way, before I became a teacher. But anyway, so um, yeah, I've been reading a lot and I've been going to a lot of beaches. I went to Michigan and so, was in the beautiful state of Michigan, enjoying beautiful Lake Michigan. And I've also been all over the coast of California this summer and reading. Love to read. If you have a favorite book, drop it in the chat. I'd love to see what you've been reading this summer. What about you, Ben? I didn't get to see it because it went so fast. I put a mountain, right? Because I got to spend a lot of time in Colorado up in the mountains. And um, of course, we're not just, we love emojis, but it, it does kind of connect to our session today, doesn't it? It does. And we're going to show you how we can make this. As you can see, look how fun this is. Look at all of you in the chat having a great time with this. All right. So our agenda, um, we got our introduction. We're going to talk today a little bit about emoji writing. Um, emoji writing is an edu protocol, uh, which is featured, by the way, in our new book, uh, Primary Edu Protocols. Uh, but you don't need to be familiar with edu protocols to understand what we're going through today. We're going to talk what about emoji writing is. We're going to do a few reps. We got examples. We got resources. We got time for questions. Uh, please add them to the chat as we're going. Jen, anything else? Um, nope. We're going to just jump in so we can get give you make sure we have lots of time if you have questions at the end. 
Um, so real quick, again, I know the chat's going crazy, but if you can just kind of tell us, like, what do you know about Edge of Protocols? And if you don't, if you don't have never heard about it or don't know that much, you can put a zero in there too, but you can kind of see one to four, where is your uh, level of experience with Edge of Protocols? And don't worry if you don't know anything yet, because you don't need to for this session. Ooh, look at and this. And you can do a number or you can throw one of those emojis in there, by the way. And so good. It's all right. Zero and one. It is all good. By the end of today, you're going to know a little bit more about emoji writing. So um, while you're doing that, we, Jen, we have some 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 questions to ponder, if you will. Questions to ponder. For sure. I don't know about you, but writing is one of those subjects that I feel like students come in, right? And they're already kind of scared of it. No matter what the grade level is, writing is intimidating for a lot of kids. And so how do you get students engaged in writing? Do you have students who that are intimidated by writing? How do you get them to write creatively? And how do you involve that critical thinking process? Us and those skills in the writing process. And we're going to kind of talk about how emoji writing does all of those things in a very safe um, environment for students. We had one comment that said, I'm, I'm scared of writing. De writing is definitely a little scary. Hopefully when we do this session, you're going to be a little bit less scared of writing because we have an answer for you, right? And so our answer for you, dun, 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 dun. Random emoji writing. So let us show you how um, this kind of works. All right, so um, just why emoji writing? Emoji writing is really designed for students to master writing a creative paragraph. I always struggled. I was more of a kind of a boring formulaic writing kind of guy. But emoji, emoji writing really helped me open it up um, and get kids writing creatively. It, it helps learners write interesting uh, sentences it, it, and interesting paragraphs, increases vocabulary, motivates students to write. And Jen, my favorite one, the last one. Kids literally ask to write um, one story. I always, every, this happens seriously every single year. Um, and when I introduce emoji writing, there's at least one or two kids who go home and ask their parents to show them emojis so they can start writing stories and they bring them to school and want to share. So it's like, if we can get kids going from scared of writing to actually asking to write and then wanting to do it at home too, that's huge growth. And so we want to really jump into that. And so um, one comment in there, I said, I, I saw like uh, kids, my kids ELL struggle. Um, you know what, Jen, I have a ton of ELLs. In fact, I found out my district with populations over 5,000 has the largest amount of ELLs in the dish uh, in the state of California. So we got tons of ELL. So all of these strategies will work with your, your students, honestly, regardless if they're, if they're ELLs or not. So a little bit about the recipe before we jump into this activity, the recipe for emoji writing. Jen? So basically, emoji writing is uh, you kind of start with anywhere between one and five emojis for the whole writing process. You quickly compose based on the emojis, and then the teacher is giving immediate feedback. So it's, it's, you're going to see kind of how this works a little bit. Um, but it, it takes a lot of that intimidation away. And we say one to five because you might start with only one when you first introduce it. And then as students like get like, more experience with it, you might jump into more like three and then you might get to five. The goal is kind of to like start small, to go big and to end up getting like a whole story. But we, we're going to show you like the, the process of it kind of. Anything you want to add to that, Ben? No, I think I think it's going to be a little bit clear. There are two ways we do it. One time we do it in Seesaw, but there's also a random emoji generator that we're going to preview. Our first preview here, as you're going to see, is in Seesaw. Now, if you're in the presentation and you'd like to kind of follow along, feel free to, you know, you can click on this activity with a little hand. You can um, open, open it up. You can present a class. Um, you can just also uh, watch us as well. Jen's going to kind of lead the activity. I am um, going to switch my tab here. You can see I've already kind of pre-opened this activity. This is uh, Jen's activity. Now, Jen not only uses this activity to teach writing, but also, you know, soup one that's very important for younger kids is the phonics. Right, Jen? I find that one of the biggest barriers for writing is all my students can ask me is how to spell things. Um, they get so caught up in how do I spell this? How do I spell this? They're not really thinking about the writing process. So a lot of times what I like to try to do to get them into like really started with writing is to use it with our phonics pattern so that they're kind of like able to quickly apply the skills that they learned and they can focus on that and at least be as successful in one area. So, um, in this example, um, I'm going to start teaching about the silent E 
having I say its name. So the long I with the silent E. I'm going to be teaching that pattern. But instead of just saying to the kids, all right, everyone, let's listen to this word and tell me the sound you hear and let's write it. I know that my students are all over the place, right? Some students know their phonics really well. Others do not know it at all. And so I want to make this challenging because if I just say, let's do the word and sound it out, my higher thinkers are checked out, not engaged. And, but if I do it too hard, my younger student, my, my lower students aren't. So this is a great way to get, start challenging them. I will tell them the pattern. Um, and then I say, okay, let's figure out what could this emoji be? Remember, it has to have the pattern. What sound are we learning right now? And I will use the eraser in Seesaw and I don't just erase it, right? I'm going to erase it slowly to start getting them to start making their guesses and thinking, what could this be? And I even tell them, let's use inferences and using that vocabulary. You, what's, what's one thing you know? What's one clue? We know it has to have the long I, so let's make sure we're using that inference when we're making this guess. Um, and we'll start to erase it. You ready? The eraser. Yeah, let's right. do it. All right. So like Jen said, I want you to think about what do you notice in this picture, okay? Boom. All right. If so you I'm have giving a, you so far. Throw it in the chat. What do you think this could be? Mm. Gonna and is there only one right answer? Yeah, there could be more than one for sure, right? All right. Ooh, I see some guesses there. Ooh, I, I love it. What? Chris, oh. why do you think it's a spider web? Could you justify your reasoning? And even better, like, why do you think if you said a bike, why do you think it's a bike? How do you know it's a bike? Please justify your reasoning. Ooh, I see wheel. Tires. Ooh. You might get ready for Yeah. So what's great about this, like, like we talked about with that vocabulary and the ELs, this is also safe because there could be multiple correct answers, all of them, as long as they have that pattern that we're really looking for, right? Um, and then eventually, if you're not really working on the phonics, it doesn't have to have the pattern. You can make this anything. But when I first started, I start with that. So for this example, we're going to go ahead and say it's bike just because that's the easiest one to go with. Um, so we find out it's a bike. What do you think when we look at this, when we look at this template, what's my next step going to be? The first step was to erase. What might my next step be? Hmm. I see number one, number two, it looks like I'm going to write something, Jen. So should we kind of break this phonics pattern apart for our, our students? Should we break it apart together? Let's break it apart together. Ready? So we said the word was bike and you might have whatever gestures you do in your classroom, right? Um, so let's go ahead. Let's do the sounds. Ready? B I. Ooh, and then so we, what's that first sound? And we, sh and again, this is a great way to model using the tools. Um, sometimes what I will do too is we'll do this whole group and then I'll be like, okay, who else, who can come up here and erase bike for me and write it themselves? Just so we're reinforcing how to use those Seesaw tools because they're going to then go do this by themselves. This is kind of like my whole group activity, but they're going to do this on their own after we're done with this. Um, and then you can see, and you can, what's great about Seesaw too is if I want to color code, I can add that silent E with a different color. We can I'm do done. all sorts of things. I'm oh, done. you think you're done, but what mm -hmm. did we forget? If I says its name, we need what at the end? What's that silent mm. letter? And so we can really reinforce these phonics strategies. But now you're probably thinking, okay, great. This is a phonics lesson. Where does the writing come into place, right? Okay, great. We found the word that was really fun, but where's the writing? So this is where we start to think about, okay, let's start a story, okay? And then we can talk about story elements. What's our Who's our character going to be? What do we want to name our character? Um, we know we have to include the word bike. What is the character doing with the bike? What's our setting? Where is the character with the bike? And so we might, we have conversations and we come up with like, just like you would do a shared writing what, and we come up with a good story. We might come up with one sentence and add more details as we ask questions. Um, but this makes it a safe place. And again, then we're modeling using the Seesaw tools. So when they go to do this on their own, they're ready. So when, if you're in the chat, I want you to think about now, Jen said you could start this as a story. You see, we have a few more slides or activity pages that we can go and add to the story in the beginning. It might just be one sentence per page, but think about what, if you're going to start a story and you have to include a bike in there, what kind of story are you going to write? What kind of sentence are you going to write? If you want to write one in the chat, um, that's great. And when, like Jen said, I, I saw a kinder teacher said CVC words. We love doing this with CVC words. We're going to start it. Um, um, and you'll see a little bit of a different ad adaptations here. So Jen, what's a sentence that what you would, would you like to start with? And remember, we don't want our weak verbs, right? We're not going to use can or like or see. We want some strong action verbs. So Jen, what do you got for me? And again, this is a story, so it can be it can be completely make believe, right? Make believe. It doesn't have to be real. It can be completely fictional. So we might have an elephant riding a bike. Um, so maybe 
uh, I saw someone say Mike. So if you're if your name is Mike, don't get offended that I'm going to call you an elephant. Okay, I Sam. just put Sam. <laughs> Sam the elephant was riding his bike in the park. Was riding and, his bike in the park. And I feel like the students are less intimidated by the spelling when they start to write this because they've already done part of the spelling. So now they feel like, okay, great. We're going to run in the story. And it's okay if things are spelled wrong, right? It's okay. Let's just practice sounding them out just like we did. Now, what's really great about this is there's one more step. And this is our favorite part of Seesaw probably. We just love it so much. But we love the microphone. If you've ever heard Ben and I talk, we just love the microphone. Um, and so now what's really fun is you know in Seesaw how they have the arrow tool. But we have that fun little emoji. So go ahead, Ben. Show them what we can do with this. All right. So again, um, moving through the gradual release, Jen and I like to model this. So the first time we're doing it together, sometimes they're on their whiteboard. Sometimes they're watching us. So we're going to hit the microphone. And we're going to hear our emoji. And we're going to use our emoji for the pointer, right? And there's a few ways to do this. But a lot of times we like students to read the word. B I K Silent I bike. Sam the elephant was riding his bike in the park. <laughs> Woo, yay. Gotta love the sound effects. And then a lot of times what I will do is after we do that, I'm like, okay, who thinks that they can read it with expression? Or who thinks, or what sound effects do you want to add? And you know how easy it is. You just un hit that undo button and we get to re-record it in two seconds. And so then you can have the kids practice and really get into it. And now we're like, whoa, you just turned your writing into a movie, like a cartoon. And so when they know that they can do that, it's way more engaging and way more motivating. Then what we do is we go to that next page. Because as you can see, we have multiple pages. This is where it gets a little tricky. But again, first step is to start to erase. Okay, what do you think in the chat? What could this be? What's our pattern? What does it have to have? And um, by the way, uh, we do have, I saw somebody looking for the resources. We do have more of the resources later on in the slideshow uh, um, as well. So don't worry if you can't find it, right? Um, so we got our next word, right, Jen? What is it? Kite. And again, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to do the sounds. We're going to write it with the pen. But now the difference is what we're going to do is we have to connect this to the story. And what your students are going to want to do automatically is just write a new sentence. Um, which honestly in the beginning is kind of how I do it. I start them with just typing the word and then they start writing simple sentences and then we start making stories because um, I want them to be successful, right? But now what they have to do is connect it. So again, remember Sam the elephant was riding his bike in the park. Now we have to add kite to the story. Does anyone have an idea of how we could add kite to our story? And you can see um, Ben is already going right here. Sam saw his friend Micah flying a kite near the park. And after we do that, again, then we record and we can start adding our sound effects. We can read with expression. We can teach them how to do those things to make writing not so formula driven, but really, really creative. And then what's awesome about this is we start doing this very modeled, right? Like, again, like Ben said, we might have them on their whiteboards writing with us. We might have them come up and type the words with us. But then they go on their own and they create their own story. They're not copying our, our story goes away. It goes bye-bye. And they make their own. And we will get like, like if you have 25 to, well, 20 to 30 kids, depending on where you are, you're going to get that many different stories. Like, literally, they're not the same at all. And it's amazing because if I just said, oh, you know, write about this, I, I get a lot of the same stuff. But if I, we do it like this, kids are like wanting to see like who can make the most interesting story. And then it's automatically differentiated, right? Because your students who can write a lot, they can, they have that ability. They can change that size of that text box. They can write as much as they want. But your other students, maybe they only have three. Do they have to do all five of these pages? Maybe they just do the first three and they're focusing on beginning, middle and end. Your high higher students can start focusing on problem and solution, cause and effect. So this is like never ending on the possibilities with what you can do with this. Um, well, I should show you, we do this with not just stories also, but we'll get to that. All right. So again, if you're in the presentation and you want direct access and Chris posted it in the chat, you can literally click on uh, this and I've, we've dropped the presentation in a few more. Right. Um, and so uh, we're going to just kind of take a second to pause um, we're gonna about to jump into some examples. Yeah, you could definitely have some kids add some more slides. And and what's cool is, you know, maybe uh, some of our advanced students that get through all five, hey, add your own emoji, continue the story on your own, right? And and that's really fun. 
Um, and again, you'll see some uh, like different examples all the way to kinder because we don't necessarily start in the same place. But, you know, I really love Jen maybe doing like uh, three with the class and then leaving the last two kind of for them on their own. And that yep. way they really have to think that um, independently. So um, anything else, Jen, to add before we move on to some of our examples? No, because I think we're going to see a lot when we show these examples. All right. So we got a lot of examples in here. Now we're not going to play them all, but we're going to start. And so this is uh, this is kindergarten where we kind of start now. You're not going to see the emoji here um, in the video, but uh, what we do is we show this emoji on uh, like a slideshow and then we'll have the kids go do a seesaw activity. So this is like first month of kindergarten right here. <laughs> So you can see we really start very, very simple, right? Okay, here's the here's the here's the emoji. Write your CVC word and you can see in this activity. Let me kind of play it again so I can have it up here. They drag the letters from over here and then they write them as well. Um, and so that gives them uh, the opportunity to kind of build it in both ways. Now we love, Jen and I love progression. Now this is a little bit later on, but Jen, what do you notice of, that's the different with this one? In this example, you can see it's not just one word, it's two words. Cause that's another thing we want to show them is there isn't always just one right answer. Um, and you can make things different. So when we reveal the emoji, what, what words could we use for this? Um, because we also want kids, we want them thinking outside of that box. We want them being creative. And so here you can see that the student thought of ladybug and red, right? They thought of two different words for the emoji and they both match perfectly. Now I'm going to skip this example. I'll play the next one because again, we want you to see, uh, this, uh, I jump into this one, this progression, right? By the way, again, you can see this last one, uh, was frog. Um, and you could see this student, uh, is working on maybe some of their blends, Right. But this is where I, I love. And this is probably about uh, let me see it. This is uh, about uh, a little bit before winter break where we kind of move into three words. You got the emoji in there it's a little bit more similar to the format that Jen saw. Are they writing a sentence yet, Jen? No, not yet. But do they say one maybe? Yeah, I'm going to play it right now. Get. Get. It gift. The gift was for Violet. B oh, bow. The bow was tied. G old gold. The gold is shiny. You know, my favorite part, Jen, about this activity uh, is I just love the part where the student, like, goes back. You can really see them internalizing. That's why I love the recording, right? Because they realized they said they said gift wrong and they went and pronounced it again, right? They went and read it again. And what I love, too, is how she's using different sentences with it. And so, like, again, like, if your students maybe aren't there yet for writing, can they still be storytellers? And so if we can get them at least recording it, that's going to then lead to them writing it. Um, and so, again, everyone can be successful, which is amazing, right? Again, kind of moving through a few more examples. This is another protocol that you that we're not going to kind of go into, but you can see we're kind of using uh, uh, these random emojis. And this is the generator you're seeing a little bit here. We're using random emojis and students are starting to generate their own sentence with parts of speech, an article, a noun, and a verb. And later, this is what I love, Jen. We use this template, by the way, and I, we generated emojis. This is later on, maybe uh, uh, towards February, I'm guessing. But you can see here, we were able to write four sentences. And my favorite part is students are writing the sentences on their own. And, mm -hmm. and so you can see the first student wrote the black sunglasses move. This student wrote the yellow face moves and the other student wrote the yellow face moves. And you can see they're all at different levels, but they're all writing their own sentences. And so um, this is, again, another uh, we call this little parts. And this is another template, another protocol. But I think you can uh, get the gist here. Um, and uh, I just love it. And then you're going to see we're going to transition, Jen. And let me know which examples you'd like to play into some of Jen's first grade examples here. I'm going to kind of no. play it because I know right now it's a black screen and then I'll pause it here. Yeah. So, and now this is where you can kind of see, so we started small, right? And now I'm, I'm going to go ahead and uh, not probably, we don't need it. We can play this example. I guess it doesn't really matter, but you're going to see how they take the emojis and they make it into a story. 
Um, and then, so like, kind of like the, when we did it together, we recorded each page individually. Um, uh, but I, I did that in the beginning, but then as, again, as we progress, then what they do is they do all the writing first and then they record it as one story. So you're going to see how this student recorded it. I think as one story, I think it's this actually, I'm going to go to, I'm going to jump to the next one here, Jen. Cause I think this is yeah. the story one. Right. Yeah. Oh, in snowing, it was snowing. So I went outside and made a snow angel. Then I was hungry. I made some warm waffles in a bowl. Then I was, when I was finished, I put my hair in a ponytail. The finish touch a bow. I love that. <laughs> After time passed by, it started to get cold. So I went inside and ate dinner. Love that you, story, Jen. You can see it's not perfect, right? The student doesn't have punctuation in all the correct spots. Maybe not everything is spelled perfectly, but that's amazing. And kind of to get to this point, right? It's a progression. And then what I have students start to do um, is they start peer editing with each other. So I tell them, okay, before you record, you need to go with a friend and tell your story and see if there's anything that they can help you. If there's anything that we can make better. Um, and so it becomes this whole amazing process. And kids are doing this 100% independently. And I might be working with some of my struggling writers to help them more with this, right? So like the rest of my class is working really independently or with a partner, they're collaborating. And then I'm working with a small group and you can see that progression. And what's great about this is I did not get the same story. I got so many different versions of this because the kids get to put their voice into it. They get to put their background into it. Like how many of the kids are going to say, oh, I did a bow with a finishing touch. This is obviously a girl who likes to have her hair done, right? I mean, so it's really kind of fun. Um, you get to see so many different different things of our students and then they can all feel successful. So we, um, I, I, I did notice we do have a few questions in there, which during our next question, we'll pause, but um, uh, we'll kind of go and look at these progressions. Jen, I love these next two, and I'm going to kind of toggle back and forth these ones. This is a little bit of a different format. And what I love about these two, Jen, is what? So in this one, again, you can see two very different levels of writing. Um, this is kind of like how I originally, this is when I was a second grade teacher, I would do it a lot like this. Um, and they would just, it was kind of the same thing. All the emojis are covered and they reveal one at a time, but it's all in one page instead of multiple pages. This might've been before there were multiple pages in Seesaw. That might be why it was like this. Um, and so, but again, if you look at these two examples, same emojis, two completely different stories and two completely different levels of writing, but yet both students were very successful. And then and I then, get a lot of information from this. And then Jen, we had to, one of our comments is, wow, it's a lot of typing if you're not ready, but guess what, Jen? Exactly. That's what's great about Seesaw is it doesn't have to be so much typing. Um, a lot of times we will do it on paper and Seesaw has that amazing, what? Camera. So camera. Anything you do on paper, camera, record it. And then you can see in this example, we drew the emojis. So as I revealed them, kids drew the emojis and then they start to think about what their stories, they start to think, okay, how can I start my story? So while they're, they're coloring and drawing their emoji, they're thinking about it. And so it doesn't have to be that way. Um, and then of course on Seesaw, you can either take, you know, each page can be a picture. You can take multiple pictures on one page and have it on one thing in Seesaw. So it's up to you. And then all you do is click that microphone to record. Cause again, we want kids reading their writing. Now, Jen, did you do these, you put the Seesaw activity up for this one or did you use the random emoji generator? Um, for this one, I use the random emoji generator, which we're going to jump into. Um, and so you can see this example too, right? We use the, in that little picture where it says like, um, uh, I can't, main idea, emoji one, emoji two, those are completely random. We're going to show you how that works because it's not, I usually do this for phonics once a week. And then I usually do it for just like story writing, uh, once a week too. So it's kind of really cool. So let's want to jump into that. Are we ready for that? Or is yeah, I think we're almost ready. We just have a few more examples, Jen. We'll walk, we'll walk through here, right? This one just kind of shows you, right, Jen, how you can use it for informational. Um, I mean, this one is about a snake and the food and a habitat. I love this one um, for poetry. I, uh, you can use it to be creative with poetry. And then we just also included some other examples on different grade levels. And you can see as we progress up these grade levels, sometimes these emojis turn from just a, a word or a sentence into what? 
into a full on, it could, like this one was an informational text, right? Um, so what's awesome about this is say you want to do this on Seesaw or you, you have multiple choices. We usually would have the random emoji generator up and then I might have an activity that's still five pages, but each page is like a different color text box. And kids will type their first response on page one, page two, but they create it into this whole thing. Um, it depends on their age group, right? So it can, it, basically each emoji can represent the paragraph's main idea, but then all of the paragraphs come together. So depending on what grade level you're teaching, uh, but the poetry, again, it didn't have to be, that one was cake. It could have been, I had some kids who wrote it about baking. I had some kids who wrote it about birthdays. Um, so it was just like, whatever that first emoji was, was the main idea of the poem and all the other emojis had to connect. Same with the informational with the snake. Didn't have to be snake. It could have been reptile. Could have been animal in general. Um, and so it, you can really make this awesome, but then the kids have so many choices and they're engaged. So right. um, we'll kind of jump in here again. Feel free to check out those uh, uh, other examples um, later on. Um, we're going to jump in here to round two where I'm going to open up now. This is uh, uh, from our Edu Protocols. This is on the Edu Protocol website, and you could always just, this is free. You can type in uh, Edu Protocols, a uh, random emoji generator, and that will bring it up. Now, these are uh, two things. These are uh, school safe emojis, right? There is one, honestly, the most unsafe. There is one that is, uh, is a bomb. That's the most unsafe. But a lot of times we talk about it in different ways. And so um, just to kind of make you aware, but the rest of these, like some of the other uh, more inappropriate ones have been removed. So I'm going to go over here and you can see I have my uh, uh, generator up here. I've already opened it up. Again, we have five emojis. We're not going to use them all. Now, I know Jen knows one of my favorite things on this page. You can see it highlighted maybe a little bit in blue at the top right here. What does it say, Jen? It says animate emojis. And this is so fun because you saw it was kind of, it would normally be gray like, like show timer is, but when you click it and then the dot moves over and it becomes all blue, that's how you know the animate is on. So here's right unanimated, there. right? Here's unanimated. Should we turn it on and roll it again? Yeah. You'll see how much more fun it is. Ooh. It just adds that, uh, you know, layer of engagement and the kids can start thinking of more ideas. Um, so, yeah. All right. So, like, if we were going to do this now, you can use, by the way, I'm going to kind of toggle back and forth. So right now we have a uh, popcorn that's up, right? And it's filling up. And so, like, you can use this, by the way. Jen and I have, like, a, a primary paper templates that we like to use. But if you just you can even just have, like, a regular piece of paper. And if we were going to just start, right? I just get my pen. Of course, I put my name on the paper. I can have students like kind of depending upon how many emojis they want, right? Put that line there. If we want to do three, I just maybe have in, in thirds. Now, like if Jen noticed in one of the other ones, right? Like I could draw like popcorn and just be very literal, Jen. But like I don't have to just draw the popcorn, right? No, you can start thinking about what your story is going to be like. Maybe you're at the movie theater. Maybe you're at your thinking. own house. Maybe you're at a friend's house and you guys are having a movie a movie sleepover. Um, so it can be so many different things. Like start thinking, what could this be? How can I we just start drew my arms? I just drew my arms coming out of my head, by the way, but it's okay. <laughs> right? So, you know, you could just do the draw and do the model. It could be a quick sketch right, right now. You could do something a little bit more fancy. And then just uh, um, um, your sentence, right? Whatever sentence you want it to be, right? So like it, it was time, for example, it was time for my favorite new movie. Now, while we're doing this, right, again, you could do this in the shared writing process. Um, you could do it like where the students are coming up. Um, you could do it as interactive writing, kind of like it fits all of those models, right? Yeah, exactly. So many, so many different things we can do with this. It's amazing. Then we'd come back here. We'll kind of at least roll it one more time. Let me do it here. Ooh, I'll do Ooh. that one. Let's roll it again. If you don't like it, you can roll it again. But what can we do with this? And this is where it gets mm -hmm. awesome because the students have to be critical thinkers. How can they connect this? And it's really amazing to see what your kids will come up with. I know, right? In the beginning, they struggle a lot, I feel like, or it, even sometimes the adults struggle more, like to think about, well, how could we connect this? But once they more practice this, right, they really have to think about, 
ways that they can connect it. Yeah. And you can adapt it in so many different ways. Right. Um, mm -hmm. um, so like, what would our next sentence be, Jen? Uh, I'm going to say I couldn't find the movie. So I was heartbroken. Mm, I couldn't find the movie because that's, so I was heartbroken. Right. Um, or, you know, like I got the time wrong. And so I would, you know, whatever you want to do, it can be as creative as you want. And then again, um, this way you can see it's a lot more, Jen and I kind of so will use the seesaw activities if we want to be very focused on a specific phonics pattern, um, or we want to provide some more scaffolding with the emojis, right? Um, but um, um, this is just like another way you can see it's the same process. And then at the end, Jen, what can we do when we're done with our writing? That's what's great. So then on Seesaw, all they can do is you, a couple things, right? You can take a picture and record, or you could have them use that paper as like they're editing. And now they're going to go type it in a note if you want them to get that typing practice and still record their note. Um, so a couple different ways you could do it. Really up to you. You could even, if you really wanted them to, start learning how to use the label and formatting size and all that, they could use a label on a page too. So it's really up to you and, and what tools you want to show your students how to use. And, and how much I, and I, and and I saw this comment. It's a great way for struggling students coming up with ideas. Yes. I love this because like, if you just tell your students, like write a story, they're like, where do I start? But you give them the emojis and it just gives them that little bit of scaffolding where you just give them a little bit. And they're like, it opens up this can of, of uh, worms. And the great thing too about emoji writing is the more you do it, right. The more you do it, like they start, they get, start to get super, um, um, fluent. So Jen, I'm going to just jump back to these questions. Um, and um, one question I had that I think was connected was when is the best time to implement these activities? Is it for a workshop or a center? Um, okay. So I usually started as a workshop just so students are getting that experience. But then once they, um, once they really understand it, this becomes our center. Uh, and then I'm usually working in a small group. What about you, Ben? Yeah, we definitely start it um, in whole group. And there's an actual like uh, uh, seesaw activity where I recorded it in my class. Um, and so um, you can see it starts like as whole group and on the carpet um, very much together. And then we, and then we move it on. And then another one, which is maybe a little, little bit unrelated uh, to this particular activity. But um, what resource do you have to share with families? Is there any resources to share with families? Um, one thing I, I just kind of like if we do it in seesaw, right, then. You know, getting them the families connected, they automatically get to uh, see it. And so just, you know, those helping get connected guides uh, in Seesaw and that way they can see it right away. Um, but I don't have a particular resource for this that I share with families. Jen? Not necessarily. Um, but but like Ben said, is what's great is that the parents can see it. I obviously send a newsletter that shows like the pattern we're working on for the week. Um, but then the other thing is sometimes parents will like, sometimes students will say, hey, can you send me? Can you put the link on Seesaw and I'll put the random emoji um, generator that we that was on that slide, the, the actual generator on Edge Protocols uh, website. I'll, I'll send that in a message or something or so that parents can access it if they want to. Um, and so, again, got great questions. So um, in the beginning, how long does this activity take in the beginning? This takes a little bit longer. Right. Especially it depends on how much phonics you're working in. So maybe in the beginning, we just do three words and it takes about, you know, uh, 10, 15, tw even 20 minutes. If you're thinking about going and getting their whiteboard, coming back to the carpet. Right. We spent I like to spend a lot of times in the beginning on really working on those phonics skills. But we get faster, we get faster and faster. And then pretty soon, right, when you saw some of those examples where they're writing a complete sentence, I mean, once they do this and they practice writing a lot, they get super fast. And I love like being able to transition these into centers later on um, because they, they're really familiar with it and they get some great practice and they really enjoy it um, as well. And so um, another qu quick question, do you ever use more than one emoji in a sentence? You could use more than one emoji sentence but i think what happens more often is kind of the re reverse way is you start using one emoji for multiple um sentences um so um i think that's helpful and then one more question and then we'll move on jen and how long does it take for your students to get writing independently you know it actually does not take as long as you would think it would i was actually when we, i was thinking about how long this activity takes i was actually just thinking that we probably only if i do this only once a week 
um, this particular way. I do this probably for about three to four weeks as whole group. And then they really, I was just thinking that they really then start doing the rest of it on their own. I only do like the reveal and like the, the, um, using the pen and I don't do any of the story elements. Then they do that all on their own during center time. So again, I'm first grade. So it's all different in kindergarten, right? Um, so it depends on your grade level. It depends on your class. Every class is different every single year. Some kids can start going independent while you're still working on the small on the on the carpet with everyone, right? So it's kind of a really cool way you can break it up based on your class. I hope that kind of helps. And um, um, I, uh, you know, that kindergarten example with hat, they're doing independent writing in the first month. Are they writing more than a sentence? Uh, uh, they're writing a sentence? No, they're writing a word. And so we move them pretty uh, pretty quick. Um, and, um, and they move on and then just one, uh, one more is like, how do you teach them to connect the, uh, the pages, right? It just takes in the beginning, we just take some modeling and we just show them and we do it together. And, you know, maybe what I'll do is in the beginning, just one page and then record the next page and the next page. But then as we get, as we get uh, more fluent, you know, they, they are able to do this. And typically I would do something like this two to three times a week, maybe in the beginning, a little bit more often, but some weeks I'll do it three times, some weeks I'll do it two times. And again, you just get to see uh, this uh, uh, amazing. And so, uh, yeah, sometimes the kids are doing it on a whiteboard and then later on uh, they'll do it uh, in Seesaw. So Jen, we have some tips coming up next. So maybe these will help and then we'll have more time for questions at the end, I hope. One more really good question is, do we pick the, do we strategically pick the emojis? Um, with phonics, I, I, when I'm doing it in the first way we showed you with erasing and finding the pattern, I, I do pick them based on the pattern and making sure it's not too complicated. I also do it in a way that the first three words are pretty simple, like my bike, kite, and maybe, I don't even know what the other one was, but then page four and five might have a blend in it or might have a soft C meeting the silent E. Um, so it's kind of more of like that, a little more of a challenge word for my higher students. It's really up to you. But when I use the random emoji generator to create a story, it is completely random. And that's where you're getting that critical thinking. It does take a little bit of time, but when we do it, you get amazing results. And um, you know what, Jen, maybe we'll go over these tips and then I'll just show them real quick because we, we have a little bit of time left, but I'd love to show them how quickly they can make one of their own. For so sure. Jen, what, what's your favorite job. tip? Um. Obviously my favorite, my favorite tip is to do this more than once a week. Uh, you have to be like committed and really do it to get the kids to that level. If you just do this every now and then you're not going to really see that growth. You're not, you're not going to see it, right? You have to really kind of commit to this and use it often. Um, and then I just think it getting kids to build as much language as possible, right? Get them to talk, get them to say the sentence, practice, 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 practice. Um, <laughs> But, you know, just in the time left, there are some more resources I'll kind of point out. But I would think, again, just really showing you uh, uh, kind of how easy this is to make. And so I have here Jen's activity up. Let me stretch it out because all I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and edit the activity. I'm going to go to the template. I'm going to kind of do this quickly. But we have videos that actually kind of show you how to do this. I'm going to erase. Right. I'm going to click my hand unlock the bike because I love that locking feature, right? Now, I've already picked out my emoji, for example. I know what I'm going to put in. I went to this website. It's called Emojipedia. Again, it's in the slide. So I went to the website and I picked out Emojipedia. Let's see. I'm Apple. We got Apple. You know, we got the Google Note. There's all these different uh, uh, emojis, but I'm going to uh, click and I'm going to copy the image. You can't see it, but I'm just clicking, uh, right clicking, copy the image. I'm going to come back here. What am I going to hit? Control or command? V. And if you know the shortcuts for locking sides and all that, that's time, way time saving. Um, but if you don't know the shortcuts by heart or it's too much to remember all that, you can just hit the three dots and lock size. We lock size, not lock all, because we want students to be able to move it around. Um, but if you don't want the students to move it around, you can lock all. We just like to have them use it to sound out the words. So it's really your preference. Um, lock size it's amazing because then you don't have to worry about any problems. And then as you can see, all we do is take the pen and cover it up. And you can pick any color you want to cover it up. I mean, it doesn't That's matter. it. That's how simple it is to make one. It's super yeah. easy. Take our templates and and add add your emojis that you want. We have a lot of of already done and I'll, we'll kind of go through those and then have a little bit more time for questions at the end. But like if you need to insert emojis, you can use uh, the Google tools. There's a, a shortcut for Max. You can use uh, the emoji keyboard for Chrome. Um, we love this emoji kitchen, right, Jen? Cause it actually lets you combine different emojis like this combined. One of my favorite things, a rocket ship 
and a crystal ball. Get even more creative. <laughs> so this was Emojipedia. There are a lot of ads on Emojipedia, but you can find like any emoji that you want there. It's free. This is, Jen, what I was referring to. This is, if you watch this Seesaw activity again, you can see how uh, when I go over it in the presentation, the hand comes up. This actually shows me modeling um, uh, the whole lesson. And so you can kind of see really what it looks like in, the, in a kindergarten classroom um, um, as well. And then like I talked about here, you can click on this link. It gives you access to some of the ones I've made, some of my templates. Um, Jen? Here's a whole bunch of my templates. If you click on them, they should all be ready to go for you. Um, and actually, if you go back one page and you click on that, if you go back and click on the one all the way to the right. One, Which one? One this more. One? One more time. Yeah, no, one more time. Go forward too. Sorry. The one that has your examples. And then if you, yep, right there. If you, What's cool is you can see this actually shows you what emojis you're going to see. So you can kind of have that preview. And we've been trying to make sure we include that in the like the notes section on our CISA activities too. So if there's like just one emoji that you're like, I don't really want that one. You, again, you saw how easy it was to copy and edit and make your changes real quick. One of the questions, yeah, um, Emoji Kitchen is a website. You can just Google like, and I'll bring it up here real quick. What do you think, Jen? Emoji yeah, we Kitchen. It's fun because sometimes you're going to use, like I, I reuse emojis. Um, <laughs> Like for, I'm trying, I'm trying, I can't think of examples right now, but I sometimes have to reuse an emoji, but I don't want to use the exact same one. So I can come in emoji kitchen. You can combine two emojis and it creates a new emoji. Um, so it's just kind of fun. So cool. And there's a bunch of different, yeah, look at all these. I mean, there's a bunch of different ones you can do. So. Wow. You can go down a rabbit oh. hole. <laughs> yes. So just, again, another fun way for getting those uh, students to be create creative, right? And so, again, this video here just kind of reiterates how that process of how I, I made them, right? Um, and Jen and I use that similar process. Feel free to uh, adapt our templates. We'd love it, by the way, if you if you share um, um, uh, with us after you're done on, on social media, if you're following us. Here's a few more resources. Of course, we have time for questions. And then in a second, we're going to do, I, uh, I believe here as we're wrapping up. Some giveaways. And as Ben said, we love when you share because you are all so amazing and you create these activities and you do stuff with your students. And when you share with us, it like inspires us and shows us what we can be doing differently too. Um, we're all better together. So if you do use these resources, please tag us, please email us, please share it. Um, cause we love seeing your examples and it, it gives us some things that we can do too. So please do. Don't forget to check out our website as well. Um, we're always doing cool stuff on there and giving you updates. And then we're going to kick it off. I think to Chris to do some giveaways. Yeah, that's right. So amazing. Thank you so much for sharing such an inspirational session. I mean, I know when I was a kindergarten teacher, this was like my heart pride and joy is getting kids to write, getting them excited about writing. Um, so super, super awesome that you shared these amazing tips, tricks, and resources. I have one more question that I do want to kind of pitch to you before we close up and do prizes. Uh, and this has to do kind of with the pedagogy around when and why you would do this. So the question was, what do you do if you have students who want to just write silly stories? Is that okay? Or how would you handle that? I think, you know, I think when I can get their a, a kids a time and place to write, I think that is, is amazing. Right. And, I think sometimes we, we need we can say if you're not comfortable, say, hey, do you know, silly stories are they're OK for this time. But you could also say, hey, this time I would really want to write um, a more serious story. Or you could even give them like you could say, I want this story to include blah, blah, blah. So giving them some creative and constraints. Like I would like this uh, story to include one piece of dialogue or I would like this story to include um, a, a kind act. Right. You can give them some creative constraints. Is it OK for them to be silly? Yes, because the goal for this is to get this right. Anything to add, Jen? I really think it's honestly your teacher, your own personal opinion. I mean, if I if I have a student who's going to write and they'll only write a silly story, I'm not going to stop them because I want them to write. Um, I know I've had students with autism, for example, who do not like to don't like to physically write. Um, and so if, if, if I can get them to physically write by telling me a silly story, I'm going to take that because they're at least doing the writing. And, and so it's really your preference, honestly. But just like Ben said, there's going to be times where you're like, okay, great. Silly story. Awesome. Love it. That's the one you can share in Seesaw. But for this other thing, what I need, maybe you're doing a writing assessment. Hey, I need this. Um, and so I think it's okay to do it both ways. It's really your, your preference. 
Awesome. Love it. Love it. Totally agree. If you can get them writing, that's a win. Let's do our giveaways. We're going to start with actually doing the prize pack giveaway from Seesaw. So we're going to Ooh. spin this one. Let's pick two winners. Actually, he's going to pick all four. I'm just kidding. It's going to pick all four winners, and we'll be able to uh, hand out all of our prizes here. We're going to follow up with Marie, Ashley, Tiffany, Christine. We're going to follow up all four of you uh, via email around kind of how to get access to either the book or to the prize packs as it goes. So we're super excited that you guys were all here. We're super excited that you were here to be a part of Connect. Huge, huge shout out and thank you to Ben and Jen to be here sharing this amazing expertise. They're sharing their links just one more time. Please make sure that you're connecting with them, following along in their journey. One quick little follow-up statement here is that your PD certificate is going to be emailed to you uh, and everything will be available on demand starting on August 4th. So give us some time to close everything up, clean up any recordings we need to. If you do have time between now and the next session, which we have about 10 minutes, uh, please go to the networking tab and connect with other educators from around the world. You can earn points in the leaderboard for that. And again, the top 50 people in the leaderboard will win some amazing prizes. So do your best to get up there. Uh, we appreciate you all being here, being a part of Seesaw Connect 2024. There will be a one question survey that will come following this uh, when we close up our webinar. So please take a quick moment to answer that, then head over to networking before you jump to the next session. But we appreciate you. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having us. Everybody have a great day.